Hi everybody, this is Rich, and it's a beautiful day. Take one. I don't have a fancy film clapper like the Rheinstedt's does, but I'm only following the pastor's instructions to be silly. I know that you know that that's quite a stretch for me. But anyway, we're doing great, and... Uh, Rich is a little groggy from waking up from his nap, but he was kind enough to come in here and film this for us. Anyway, hope you all are doing fine. We're keeping you in our prayers constantly and in our thoughts. Anyway, I thought you'd like to see uh, a little bit of my quilting room, um, because I know many of you have never had an opportunity to come over here. And this, this is my cutting table where I cut all my pieces of fabric using rulers and my uh, rotary cutter and Rich built this cutting table for me and it's got all my scraps stored down in here nice and neatly organized by color so that they're always handy. Whoa. Okay. And those are the purples. And uh, he also built this beautiful oversized ironing board for me so that uh, it was easier to, to um, iron quilt tops. And uh, it's just set up on little legs so that I have more storage room under here. And this is the pile of fabric that I'm gonna be making the quilt for the winner of the church's quilt raffle as soon as I get to it. And this is my sewing table, which Rich also built for me. It's just the perfect height, so when I sit it there, I'm ergonomically correct, and that's almost as important as being politically correct. Maybe not quite, though. And then we have storage in here, and uh, this is my current project. This is a, called a clamshell quilt. I started it when I was taking a class a few days after I got uh, had broken my right wrist and my ankle and everything. But I had already signed up for this class, so I went to it, and uh, because I'm, I like to persevere. Anyway, so uh, somebody had to cut all of these pieces for me so that I could sew them together. But I only got a little bit done, and I've done a lot more since I got home. And when it's finished, I'm going to call it feeling a little clammy. Anyway, so I've got something that out. Eric had asked me to share with you that has helped me through the years. And so I'm going to, uh, pardon the notes, I'm going to talk to you about that. And uh, I think one of the things that he encouraged, Eric had encouraged us to do is to read, read our word all the time. And one way that we can harness the power of the tongue, which has both the power of death and life in it, and we can harness that for the glory of God and for our own benefit by reading our word of God out loud. Don't simply absorb it with your eyes and your intellect, but read out loud and you'll also absorb it with your ears. And anything you hear with your ears goes down into your heart. And uh, the spoken word, hearing it over and over again, will bury treasures into your heart so that you have a wellspring to draw upon when you most need it. So you think back to uh, when negative words have been spoken to you, either when you were a child or even as an adult, and you quote unquote take them to heart. Well, those negative words become chains around our heart that bind us and imprison us and when we instead speak the word of God aloud by reading it, you uh, it start that word will start breaking those rusty old chains and freeing you. And the more you read the word, the more those chains are broken, and and you're, the more free you become. And pretty soon you will be taking the words of God to heart instead of. The negativity around you. And remember, God's word never returns void. We're promised that in the scriptures. 
And it's important to know that that includes God's word spoken into your heart never returns void. It will multiply and uh, just uh, make your life so much better and uh, help you to be that light in the world. We hope you're okay and we'll hope to see you soon and be able to hug you in person. Bye-bye.